Recent research estimates that more than 600,000 people in Australia may suffer from hoarding disorder. This is in line with the findings of studies in the US, the UK and Europe that estimate that between 2% and 5% of people may be living with hoarding disorder and in need of help. But what exactly is hoarding and why is it considered a clinical disorder? And how can we better understand and address this increasingly widespread problem in our community? Simone Eisman and Jeanette Svela, two psychologists at Lifeline Harbour to Hawkesbury, are working to increase the availability of treatment of hoarding disorder within the North Sydney region through the training of professionals who are likely to come into contact with instances of hoarding. Hoarding disorder is all about difficulty discarding. It's when the person is fearful, anxious and overwhelmed when they need to let go of some of their stuff. So as a result, they have a strong urge to hang on to their possessions and more and more stuff starts mm. accumulating in their home. Uh, movement in the rooms was not easy. Uh, there was too much uh, stuff there. Things just kept on piling up and you know, in the end it was just, um, you know, you could hardly walk down the hall. Hoarding probably starts to become a disorder when that clutter seems to start overtaking the house and you find that you can't get through the rooms easily. Um, there's so much stuff you might have to climb over things. There are boxes everywhere. And there is that level of social impairment or functional impairment. Um, and it causes distress. Mm, it might mm. not be obvious, but it does cause distress. The people who live with you become disheartened and depressed. But I haven't been able to have people come in to, to my life. No, I've needed help, I still haven't had a relative there. I've been there 27 years. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a wall between me and others. If the people who live with you feel that you put objects in front of them, that you prefer to have your collection of stuff rather than have a conversation with them. So it's toxic. It's a, a toxic atmosphere. That's the worst thing. Lifeline Harbour to Hawkesbury became involved with hoarding treatment following an approach from a local council. Three years ago, there were no hoarding treatment programs available in northern Sydney. But a suicide related to hoarding prompted one of the local councils to approach Lifeline Harbour mm. to Hawkesbury and ask for help um, mm. with treating hoarding mm. disorder. And that is how it really started for us. They were looking for someone to start a treatment program um, to actually treat the person with hoarding disorder, not just tidy up the house. When I first went to the group, the very first time I wanted to walk out the door, but we were all feeling the same way. The look on our face was, what am I doing here? I don't know you. How can you possibly understand what I'm going through? And it's, it's, it's fabulous. I mean, we, we talk like brothers and sisters. It's, it's just, it, we are a family. You belong to, it's, it's a family. It's a family affair. It's wonderful, absolutely wonderful. We are, we are each other's uh, counsellors in a way. It has been an incredible journey. It's given us insights into why it's happened. Not just how to fix something. You realise, you know, we had a manual, we had homework to do every week. We realise how it all happened, how it came about. Effective hoarding treatment substantially improves the quality of life, not only of the people who have been living with the disorder, but of those around them too. Well, family are are often relieved, you know, even if they're not living with them, they've got a family mm. member who's living unsafely or about whom they're very concerned. Mm. Um, so it's a relief to see that this person acknowledges there's a problem and is actually starting to do something about it. So it helps improve relationships. Mm. I actually had relatives at my place on Boxing Day last Christmas 
for the first, well my sister, I've been there 27 years and my elder sister had never seen it. Never been there once. And it's also good for the community. It, it, mm. It's hard when your neighbour's stuff, it, there's too much of it, it's creating problems. Mm. So it improves neighbourhood relationships as well. So generally there's a real reduction in conflict, whether mm. it be within the family or within the community, amongst neighbours, amongst local councils. Other organisations do need to get involved with treating hoarding disorder. It really is a myth that most people with hoarding disorder don't have insight. There are plenty of people out there with an insight needing help mm. around changing their behaviour. And what is also important is that the treatment that we offer is research based, that there's a body of evidence showing that that treatment is effective. It provides a consistent approach to treating people with hoarding disorder. To last 22 months I've made, I've gone ahead leaps and bounds and I'm not my possessions anymore. I, I am actually, I'm not my clothing or my documents and all that. I'm who I am and that's enough. It's, it's, it's just a different feeling to be in the present. I was like wrapped up, you know, in knots, and now I'm not that. And when I've come out of a, a group or a support group, I just want to race home and get stuck into it again. I just want to get there. Hoarding isolates people. It makes them prisoners in their own homes. In extreme cases, it can be dangerous and disabling. But hoarding is far from being an isolated problem in our society. In fact, it appears to be on the increase. And it is a complex and challenging problem for those who are working to alleviate the disorder. Hoarding disorder can be treated. People with hoarding disorder have complex needs and require long-term interventions to support their recovery. They don't have to live a life walled in by too much stuff. Uh, it has changed my life completely. It it has opened a new life.